Welcome to this CUBE conversation featuring Rockset CEO and co-founder Venkat, Venkat Armani, who selected a season two of the AWS Startup Showcase featured company uh, before co-founding Rockset. Venkat was the engineering director at Facebook, infrastructure team responsible for all the data infrastructure, storing all there at Facebook, and he's here to talk real-time analytics. Venkat, welcome back to theCUBE for this CUBE conversation. Thanks, John. Thanks for having me again. It's a pleasure to be here. I'd love to read back, um, and I know you don't like to take a look back, but you, you know, at Facebook, it was huge. Um, hyperscaler data at scale, really a, a leading indicator of where everyone is kind of in now. So this is about real-time analytics moving from batch, the theme here. You guys are at the center. Of, we've talked about it before here on theCUBE. Um, and so let's get in. We've got a couple of different good talk tracks to dig into. But first I want to get your reaction to this soundbite I read on your blog post. Fast analytics on fresh data is better than slow analytics on stale data. Fresh beats stale every time, fast beats slow in every space. Where's that come yes. from? Obviously makes a lot of sense. Nobody wants slow data. Um, no one wants look, stale data. <laughs> look, look, we live in the information era. Uh, businesses uh, you know, do want to track as much information as possible about their business and want to you know, use data-driven decisions. This is like, now like motherhood and apple pie, like no business would say that is not useful because there's more information than what can fit, fit in one person's head that the businesses want to know. You can either do Monday morning quarterback or in the middle of the third quarter before the game is over, you're maybe six points down. You look at what plays are working today. You look at like, you know, who's injured in your team and who's injured in your opponent. And you try to come up with plays that can change the outcome of the game. Uh, you know, you still need Monday morning quarterbacking. That's not going anywhere. That's batch analytics. That's BI, classic BI. And what the world is demanding more and more is, is operational intelligence. Like, you know, help me run my business better. Don't tell me, you know, you know don't just give me a, a, a great report at the end of the quarter, you know? Yeah, this is the whole trend. Looking back is, is key, post-mortem, all that good stuff. But being present to make future decisions is a lot more mainstream now than ever was. You guys are the center of it. And I want to get your take on this data-driven culture because the showcase this year for this next episode of the of the showcase for startups is cloud startups is data as code. Something I'm psyched for because I've been saying it on the cube all for many years. Data as code is almost as important as infrastructure as code because when you think about the application of data in real time. It's not easy, it's a hard problem. And two, you want to make it easy. <laughs> so this is the whole point of this data-driven culture that you're on right now. Can you talk about how you see that? Because this is really one of the most important stories we've seen in, 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 since the last inflection point. Exactly right. I think uh, what is data-driven culture, which basically means you stop guessing, right? You look at the data, you look at what the data says, and you try to, you know, Come up with hypothesis. It's still a guide. You know, it's still a guardrail. It's still a you know, it's a guiding light. It's not going to tell you what to do, but you need to be able to interrogate your data. If every time you ask a question and it takes twenty minutes for you to get an answer from your you know a favorite Alexa, Siri, or what have you, uh, you are probably not going to ever use that device, right? Like you will not try to you know be data driven. In in you know you can't really build that culture. So it's not just about visibility. It's not just about you know looking back and you know getting analytics on how the business is doing. You need to be able to interrogate your data in real time in, in an interactive fashion, and that I think is what uh, real time analytics gives you. This is what you know we say when we say fast analytics on real time data. That's what we mean, which is as you make changes to your business on the course of your day to day work, uh, week to week work, what changes are working? Uh, you know how is how much impact is it having? If something isn't working, you have more questions to figure out why and being able to answer all of that is how you really build the data-driven culture. And it isn't really going to uh, come from just looking at static reports at the end of the week and the end, end, of, the, end of the quarter. So talk about the latency aspect of, of, of the, the term and how it relates to um, where it could be, you know, um, a, fa a false flag in the sense of, you could say, well, we have low latency, but you're not getting all the data, right? You got to get the data Correct. You got to ingest it, make it addressable, query it, represent it. These are huge things. When you factor in every single data where you're not guessing, latency is a factor. Can you unpack what this new definition is all about and how do, how do people understand where, if, whether they got it right or not? A great question. A lot of people say, you know, it's five minutes real time because, you know, I used to run my thing every six hours, right? Now for us, 
if it if it's more than two minutes, two seconds behind in terms of your data latency, data freshness, it's too old. Uh, you know, when does the present become the past? And you know, the future hasn't arrived yet. And you know, we think it's about one to two seconds. And so everything we do at Rockset, you know, we only call it real time if it, you know, if it can be within one to two seconds, because that's the present. That's what's happening now. If it's five minutes ago, it's already five minutes ago. It's already past tense, right? So if you kind of like uh, break it down, you're, you're absolutely right that you know you have to be able to bring data in to a system uh, in real time, you know, without sacrificing freshness, uh, and you you store it in a way where you can get fast analytics out of that. So Rockset is the only uh, real time data platform, real time analytics platform with built in connectors. So this is why we have built in connectors where without writing a single line of code, you can bring in data in real time from wherever you happen to be managing it today. And when data comes into Rockset, now the latency is about query processing, right? If you, you know, what is the point of bringing in data in real time if every question you're gonna ask is gonna still take 20 minutes to come back? Well, that's then, then you might as well batch data as, 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 as you know, in order to load it. So there, I think we have a, uh, conversion indexing. Uh, we, we we have a you know real time indexing technology that allows people you know data as it comes in real time to be organized in a way, and have a distributed SQL engine on top of that. So as long as you can frame your question using a SQL query, uh, you can ask any question on your uh, on your real time data and expect subsequent response time. So that I think is the the combination of the latency having two parts to it. One is how fresh is your data and how fast is your analytics. And you need both with the simplicity of the cloud for you to really unlock and, and make real-time analytics the default as opposed to, you know, let me try to do it and batch and see if I can get away with it. But if you really need real-time, you have to be able to do both, cut down your and control your data latency on how fresh your data is and also make it fast. You know, you talk about culture. Can you talk about the people you're working with and how that translates into your next topic, which is business observability, a nice play on words, obviously observability. If you can measure everything, there shouldn't be any questions <laughs> that you can't ask, right? So, so, but it's important, this culture is shifting from hardcore data engineering to business value kind of coming together um, at scale. This is kind of where <laughs> you see the hardcore data, you know, folks really bringing that into the business. Can you talk about this, the people you're working with and how that's translating to this business observability? Absolutely. We work with the, you know, world's probably largest buy now pay later company. Uh, maybe they're in the top three. They have hundreds of millions of uh, users, uh, you know, and, you know, 300,000 plus merchants. They have, uh, you know, work in so many different countries, so many different payment methods. And there's a very simple problem they have. Uh, some part of their product, some part of their payment system is always down at you know at any given point in time, or or is has a very high chance of not working. It's it's not the whole thing is down, but for this one merchant, uh, you know, uh, in Switzerland, uh, Apple Pay could be not working, and so all of those kinds of transactions might not be processing. And so, you know, they had a very classic cloud data warehouse based solution. Uh, accumulate all these payments every six hours. They would kind of like process and look for anomalies and say, "Hey, these things needs to be investigated, and some incident uh, response needs to be, uh, you know, a response team needs to be tackling these." Uh, the business was growing so fast; those analytical jobs that would run every six hours in batch mode was taking longer than six hours to run, and so that was a dead end. They came to Rock said, simply using SQL, they're able to define all the metrics they care about across all of their dimensions. And they're all up to the, you know, accurate up to the second. And now they're able to run their models every minute. And, you know, in sort of six hours, every minute they're able to, you know, find anomalies and, and run their statistical models so that now they can protect their business better. And more than that, the real side effect of that is they can offer a much better quality of uh, a product, much better quality of service uh, to their customer uh, so that the customers are very sticky because uh, now they're getting into the state where they know something is wrong with one of their merchants even before the merchants realize that. And, and that allows them to provide a much, much better, uh, build a much better product uh, to their end users. So, so business observability is all about that. It's about, do you know really what's happening in your business and can you keep tabs on it in real time uh, you know, as, as you go about your business? Uh, and, and this is what we call operational intelligence. Like it's really, uh, businesses are really demanding 
operational intelligence a lot more than just traditional BI. And we're seeing it in every aspect of a company, the digital transformation affects every single department. Sales, use data to get big sales better, uh, make the product better. People use data to make product usage, whether it's you know A-B testing, whatnot, risk management, ops, you name it, data is there to drill down. So this is a huge part of real time. Are you finding that the business observability is, is maturing faster now, or where, where do you put the progress of companies with respect to getting on board with the idea that this wave is here? I think, I think it's a very good question. Um, I would say um, it, the, it has gone mainstream primarily because if you look at technologies like Apache Kafka and you see Confluent doing really, really well, uh, they, you know, those technologies have really enabled now customers and, and business units, business functions across the spectrum, you know, to be able to now acquire, you know, really, really important business data in real time. If you didn't have those mechanisms to acquire the data in real time, well, you can't really do analytics and, and get operational intelligence on that. And so the maturity is getting there and things growing very fast as, as those kinds of technologies get better and better. Uh, SASification also is a very big component to it, which is like more and more business apps are basically becoming, you know, uh, SaaS apps. Now that allows everything to be in the cloud and being interconnected. And now when all of this, those data systems are all interconnected, you can now have APIs that make data flow from one system to another all in, happening in real time. And that also unlocks a lot more potential for, again, getting better, uh, you know, uh, operational intelligence for, for your enterprise. And um, you know, the, the, there's a subcategory to this, which is like uh, you know, B2B SaaS companies, uh, you know, all, all also having to you know build real-time interactive analytics embedded as part of their offering. Otherwise, people wouldn't even want to buy it. And so, so the, it's all interconnected. I think uh, I think the market is emerging, market is growing, but but it has gone mainstream. I would say predominantly because. You know, uh, you know, Kafka, Confluent, and and these kinds of uh, you know real time data, you know, collection uh, and aggregation kind of systems have gone mainstream, and now now you actually get to uh, you know dream about operational intelligence, which you couldn't even think about like you know maybe five or ten years ago. They're getting all their data together. So to close it out, take us through the bottom line: real time business observability, great for companies collecting the data, but now you got B two B, you got B two C. People are integrating partnerships where APIs are connecting. It doesn't have to be, it could be third party business relationships. So the data collection is not just inside the company. It's also outside. This is more value. This is the exactly. confluence of exactly. all. Exactly. So, so more and more, uh, instead of going to your data team and, and demanding uh, real time analytics, a lot of uh, what, what a lot of business units are doing is, uh, you know, they're going to the, the, the product analytics, you know, uh, platform, you know, the SaaS app they're using, uh, you know, for, for powering various parts of their business, they go to them and demand, you need to, you know, for this, either this is my recruiting software, sales software, customer support, you know, give me, uh, give me more real-time insights. Otherwise, you know, it's not really that useful. And so there is really a, a, a huge uptick on, on all these SaaS companies now building uh, you know, real-time infrastructure uh, powered by Rockset uh, in, in many cases uh, that actually ends up giving a lot of value to their uh, end customers. And, uh, and, and that I think is kind of like the proof of value for a, for a SaaS product. Uh, all the workflows are all very, very important, absolutely. But almost every uh, um, you know, amazing SaaS product has an analytics tab and it needs to be fast, uh, interactive, and it needs to be real time. It needs to be talking about you know fresh uh, insights that are happening, and uh, that is often you know uh, you know B two B SaaS uh, you know application developers always comes and tell us that's the proof of value that we can show why you know how much value that that particular SaaS application is creating you know for their customer. So I think it's all um, two two sides of the same coin. You know, large enterprises want to build it themselves because they now they get more control about how exactly uh, the problem needs to be solved. Uh, and then, you know, there are also, you know, other uh, solutions where you rely on a, on, a, on a SaaS application where you demand that particular application gives you. But at the end of the day, you know, I think the world is going real time, you know, and, and we're very, very happy to be part of this movement. Uh, operational intelligence uh, for every, B, you know, classic BI use case, I think there are 10 times more operational intelligence use cases um, as Rock said, you know, we, we, we are on a mission to eliminate all cost and complexity barriers and, and really, really provide fast analytics on real-time data with the simplicity of the cloud and really be part of this movement. You guys having some fun 
right now, these days, they're in the middle of all the action. Absolutely. Uh, I think we're growing very fast. Um, you know, uh, we're hiring, uh, you know, we are onboarding uh, as many customers as possible and, and, and really looking forward to being part of this movement and, and really accelerate uh, this movement from business intelligence to operational intelligence. Well, Venkat, great to see you. Thanks for coming on the Cube as part of this Cube conversation. Uh, you're in the class of the Adidas Startup Showcase Season 2, Episode 2. Thanks for coming on. Keep it right there, everyone. Watch more action from the Cube, your leader in tech coverage. I'm John Furrier, your host. Thanks for watching.